Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here today. I am so honored to be joined by this incredible multi-generational Christian band. They have millions of streams under their belts. We the Kingdom is in the house. Andrew, Ed, Franny, Martin, and Scott, thank you for joining me. <laughs> You guys are awesome, and I'm just glad to be able to talk to you, to get to know you more. So let's start there. We the Kingdom. How, what an incredible name. What a cool name. What's behind it? Yeah, so that's crazy. This is Andrew, and I tried to start a band called We the Kingdom about 12 years ago. I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. And man, speaking of miracle power and all of this, this season, kind of really crazy how it's all come together. But I tried to start this a band called We the Kingdom in my hometown and could not get people to stay in, in the band. You know, people were calling me night of shows like, hey, sorry, I can't be there. And I got really discouraged. I was like, man, Lord, I thought I heard from you. And the crazy thing is I got the social media, the website, I got all this stuff ready. And I was like, all right, I'm here. I'm ready to do, you know, what I feel like I'm called to do, to follow my dream, to follow the Lord. And I just could not get it to, to happen. I couldn't get it to stay together. And so I got really disappointed. I was like, Lord, maybe I heard you wrong. And I set it to the side and then for years, I, you know, I did production stuff behind the scenes and met these guys in Nashville. I moved to Nashville shortly after that. And we just started a friendship and kind of went through some life together. We were doing camps. We had dreadlocks when we first met him. <laughs> yeah. Really? How cool yeah. is that? Oh, I love dreadlocks. I was working on it. I was and almost on it. dreadlocks are grosser than actual. <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> that was a different time. Different time. But, uh. Yeah, so we were we were playing some uh, Young Life camps together, and Scott had been, you know, uh, had this relationship with Young Life and been playing camps there, and brought us all along. Um, and this was probably about five years ago that we, you know, were at a Young Life camp and sat down, and we just went through a really really hard year. And again, we were all um, behind the scenes, doing music behind the scenes, and just doing this worship thing for kids. Uh, and so, yeah, we sat down and, and processing the year at this camp. We were around a hot tub and. We just wrote, we were like, man, we feel like we need to write a song. So we wrote a song called Dancing on the Waves. And it had no idea the trajectory of what that song would do. But that song started the journey of We the Kingdom. And you know, a couple of months later, we sat down and we're like, what are we going to do with the song? Like, we started writing more songs shortly after that. And I was like, well, I have a name. I have a name and the website and social media. I have everything all set up. I'm going to use it. And everybody loved it and jumped on board. And as I was driving home from that, I just started crying because I, I heard the Lord tell me, like, this is the reason I gave you these dreams and, and just because it wasn't right at that time doesn't mean I'm not faithful and it won't come through mm. my promises and so for me even coming out with our first song single of this record Miracle Power it's it takes a while like you look at the hall of the faith in Hebrews it talks about Abraham believed God and you know it goes through all of these people that believe God and it took years Abraham took way more than 10 I think it took like 50 years something like that but he was already too old to have kids at the start of it so it's crazy just to see the faithfulness and the miracles that God does in your life and we the kingdom looks different than i would have ever imagined but it's way better because it's god's plan god's time so yeah that's the yeah. story behind it. And so excited to amen be here. Doing? that's awesome yeah god needed you to be adopted into this incredible family so that then y'all can go do what <laughs> you need to let's do. Go. So let's let's talk about that because I know uh, I, I heard Franny say it in another interview that I watched. Um, so Franny, can you kind of introduce like the relation that everyone has here? Yeah, so the band is my dad, Ed, and his younger brother, Scott, um, and then me and my brother, Martin, and then our really good friend, Andrew. Yep, you're, you're a brother from another mother, right? Right. <laughs> I love that. So um, let's talk about Miracle Power. Um, you know, it's your new single and we're in a time where honestly the jury's still out if some people even believe in the miracle power of God. And I'm not even talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about Christians, right? There's, there's a bunch of um, surveys that were just released that there, there's Christians, there's pastors that don't even really believe um, in the miracle working power of God still. Tell us about kind of that idea and that theme. Yeah, you're so right when you say that. Like, it, it's interesting when you see that in, even in believers, they don't know what they think about it, you know? And I think the root of that is it's got to be disappointed. It's got to be, you know, whenever you doubt that, because the scripture says it's true, it's still happening in the New Testament. So, so it's tough. And I think like on this side of heaven, 
I think that from God's perspective, the uh, earth on this side of heaven and heaven are more connected than we see them. But one time I was really discouraged because um, one of my like friends wasn't like recovering from his sickness. And it was like really hard for me to process that. It's like, God, why, you know, why were you healed? This was years ago. And I felt like the Lord showed me then the ultimate healing is heaven when you get home. Like even now, like I'm healthy, I'm well, but like, I still need that new body. I still need my emotions and my sin to be healed, you know, and that will happen on the, on the day when we get to be with Jesus. So I think that, you know, yes, God still is moving in every aspect of life, the small things and the big things. But I think there is an element to the already, but not yet that we really wrestle through as believers. But my encouragement would be to not let disappointment get in the way of believing what God says is true. And that if not now, then I know that he will make all things right. And, uh, but on this side of heaven, I really do believe that God, that God works miracles. And I think that we tend to see them, interestingly enough, in countries where people don't have access to everything that they need to numb their pain, whether it's emotional or physical. I think in, in the United States, we really struggle with that because we we don't really wait on God here. You know, we don't we don't we have a hard time really waiting on Him and on His timing, which looks so different than ours. It's like a, you know, a thousand days is one day to the Lord. Scripture says that, so. It's, really hard uh, here that's why I love that second verse line it says sometimes it's so hard being human all the struggle and all the pain you know and like I love when the Bible says like we don't have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with us in our weakness like he gets it you know but we just gotta wait on him and trust him and then if not now and the next I know that he will do miracles but I hope that that doesn't discourage our hearts from from believing him to do whatever we need now mm. That's beautiful, beautifully said. Um, you know, I know that kind of how you guys came together and um, Andrew, you you hinted to this before, you kind of went through a season of some kind of spiritual, you know, church hurt um, and being transparent, I myself did as well, um, was on fire for like, was a pop star, completely in the world, completely wretched, got totally saved, transformed, started to you know live for Jesus, serve the Lord in the church, got completely destroyed in the church and even got kicked out. And I was genuinely like a believer now. And um, so I know what church hurt is like and spiritual abuse is like. And but you know, I think about how God used it even to make you guys come together the way he did and you're single the way, you know, how amazing it ministered to people. Uh, looking back on it, I, I want to be petty I, I, and I want to say, well, look at you now, um, you know, to, to the people who hurt you. But um, how, you know, how how has that, you know, there's tons of people, especially in, let's say, maybe Franny and, and you know, and, and your, your generation. And, and there's tons of people who walk away from church because they've experienced some kind of church. Y'all have survived. You're thriving. You're spirit filled. Can you talk to anyone who might you know, have went through something like that? I, I just, I feel this so strongly. I think one of the greatest dangers is to put on the face of God, the pastor that hurt us or the parent mm -hmm. that hurt us or the friend or the enemy or whoever. And we see, you know, versions of Jesus in, these Christians who are just broken people. And then we end up thinking that that's what God looks like. And God looks nothing like any man that's ever lived. Not mm -hmm. even close. His ways are higher than our ways. And it's not fair to God to put onto him the wounded people that live in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, he's holy. He's perfect. And uh, I think for our minds, for my mind, that is so hard to understand some days. I mean, to even talking about our song Miracle Power, I think the irony of this, and this has really been hitting me lately, I actually have not talked about this, but that church that we were in that you uh, referenced, one of the big things there was the miraculous healing power of God. And a lot of times they would bring people up, there was this healing that would happen if you had enough faith to believe and if you didn't then something was wrong with your faith 
and that really messed with me. It actually caused me to really question, well, maybe God isn't miraculous after all. I think where I get um, really challenged by that is to suggest that God doesn't do miracles anymore is arguably to suggest that he can't do miracles anymore. Mm-hmm. And I would say that God is sovereign. His ways are higher than our ways. He can do a miracle anytime he wants. He didn't stop the ability to do miracles. So what's the deal? Is it a lack of faith? Is it just his sovereignty? He doesn't see fit to do it right now. I lean toward that. You know, I think that our faith does play an element in there, but I don't think it's this shaming kind of thing where you better get it right. If you don't muster up enough faith and something's wrong with you, God's not going to come through. I don't, I don't think God works like that. Uh, that would, yeah. I mean, these are deep theological, you know, discussions. And I, I think ultimately it's just important to remember that he's a loving father. He loves his kids. And if he feels like a miracle is going to be, you know, what it takes to get through, I mean, there's no mystery. But there are modern-day medical miracles that happen, you know. I've seen them documented where people can't ex- explain this stuff. I think what Franny talks about, ultimately heaven is the ultimate culmination yeah. of all healing. But I don't think that means that he's not going to move here. So there, there's a tension. There's a rub with it. And I just say I think it's okay for us to be wrestling with it and, and working through it. And we give ourselves a lot of grace as we heal. I mean, I would say that I feel like it's a miracle that I've been healed from the church wound that I had. My gosh, I never thought I would get over that. And I really do feel like I'm finally at a place where the Lord has, uh, has healed that. You know, I still walk with a limp, still have the scar, but it doesn't plague me like it did. Yeah. I think, Jeannie, for people like us and, and like you were sharing, you've been hurt by that. You know, you didn't have this miracle because of a lack of faith. I just want those people to know, like, if I can just speak to them because I've experienced that. You know, it's not your fault. Like, it's not your fault. Like, Dad said, God is sovereign, you know, and, and, and so it's not your fault. Like, it's just, that's in God's hands. And, and just because he didn't do a miracle here doesn't mean that it's, you know, that it didn't happen. So, yeah, it's a shame because I, I want to say, did we go to the same church? But we did not because my church was in New York. Um, but it's so similar what happened to, to you and happened similarly to me. Um, and yeah, like we said, there is, there is that out there, but there's also, you know, the, the true power of the living God that's reigning and ruling. And, and I thank God for your, your band and how he's used you. Your authenticity is amazing. And it's what we need right now, which is what I know is what is actually relating to people so much. Tell us about the new album. You guys are in the thick of it. You were, you were so well received. I mean, I, I, I'm a worship leader. I told you I was a pop singer. Now I'm a worship leader, but um, I've sung some of your songs and um you know god has just used your music amazingly what can we expect for the next round Uh, i think as an artist man a lot of the times you struggle with like how often do you replicate what what you know is connecting but also reinvent yourself to offer uh not only new art to people but the gospel in a different light that could speak to someone maybe outside the church who would never in a million years sit in a pew uh, but for some reason you know they're open to the gospel and and you write a song that has language that you know is attractive because the gospel is attractive jesus is attractive and so i think what we've tried to do on the album is play off of you know kind of old school we the kingdom you know sonically lyrically, uh, but also introduce a new sound that hopefully inspires people um, to love God in a deeper way, to love music in a deeper way. So it's been cool to see like what happens when you put, like there's four decades sitting right here on this bench. So what happens when you put all these different influences together, you know, and you have kind of pop modern stuff combined with like old Southern rock, you know, electric guitar riffs or whatever. And uh, it's been cool to see kind of the outcome, you know. I'm surprised that it, uh, at least to us, feels right 
because you would think those clash, you know, and there's some moments to work through um, with that, but we're stoked, man. It's going to be, it's going to be fun to kind of step into this new thing. I can't wait. I really can't wait. Um, so, uh, Scott, are you going to share anything with us? <laughs> Everyone said something, um, but we are going to wrap it up now. I thank you guys for taking the time um, to, to share with me. I will, I will see if anyone wants to end with this, but I think it was Jason Crabb that I was talking about, talking to, and he was on the road or something or doing some shows with you guys that he was so impacted by just how the Lord uses you and moves through you guys. Um, how do you keep that burning and that, that passion going? That reminds me of a year ago, <laughs> we were playing this festival in North Carolina and Jason Crabb was standing side stage with a bandana and sunglasses on and just rocking it on the side of the stage with us. It was like, I'll never forget I, I watched him more to the side of the stage during that set than I engaged with the crowd because he was just tripping. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I might have been right after that, that, he, that I spoke to him. Yeah, it was incredible. Um, sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> just how do you keep that, you know, that connection oh, with yeah. the Lord? You know, fire burning. I don't know what it is, but I feel like, I want to make sure I can say this honestly. It is extremely rare that we get on stage and have to like turn on the performance part of it. Extremely rare. Can I say that that never happens? No, it does happen sometimes. Yeah. But I feel like the stage, our, our manager mentioned this just because we've had a really stressful season the last couple months trying to make a record and tour at the same time. We, he said, man, I hope for you guys that, that the 45 minutes on stage can be just like a, just a rest, you know, just to let everything go, let all the stress go and just enjoy playing music. And I feel like God has continually um, kept that time on stage at a sacred time for us. And we've had our battles during it for sure, but, but it's just, it, it feels really special. And I do feel like God continues to give us energy for it. And it, well, there are times where we've slept three hours on a bumpy bus, but we get on stage and, and at least for that 45 to 70 minutes, whatever it is, we can sort of lock in and play and, and, and encounter the Lord and encounter people there. So it's been a real gift, man. It's, I, I don't understand. It's a mystery. This whole thing is so wild. Like it's wow. such a wild mystery, you know, cool. um, and it's really hard, but it's really beautiful. Cool. Well, it's been a gift to us and I thank you for just continuing to just be faithful to God and uh, as a family, you, you know, delivering what God deposits in you. I appreciate you. I've been wanting to chat with you. So I'm happy that we got a chance to do that. And um, may God bless you guys and keep you while you're on the road and recording this record. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.